I've got it. Yay. Hey, hey. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> delighted to be chatting with you. Myself, another Steve, and Deb. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi guys. Hi. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Hey, it's great. Great to see you. And uh, you're in London. Uh, you know what? I've always wanted to know. Uh, I've been to London a lot of times, but uh-huh. the hustle and bustle of London for me is just too much. Do you do you actually enjoy living down there? <laughs> so I've probably lived in I've lived in London since oh, I was about eighteen. So you know, a hundred years ago, I moved to London, <laughs> <laughs> and I li- when I first came to London, I lived in lots of bed sits, you know, like you do all over all over the place. So I got to know London quite well just from moving from various little hovels that I was living in. And um, but I've been living in this part of London for about. 30 yeah coming up for 30 years now wow. so looks like so, it so yeah so i've so i've kind of adjusted because i'm from kent you know i'm from a uh yeah. relatively small town in kent and coming to london for me it was a big thing as a kid you know coming to london for the day for christmas or whatever <laughs> was a special event you know coming up to oxford street and seeing the lights and all that bit but yeah that business but um living here i i, I think the older i get the more I enjoy time away from London, just yeah. because you're right, it's crazy. You know, people are uh, busy, yeah. they're dashing uh, on the tube, but nobody looks up because they're all on their phones. You don't have any <laughs> eye contact with anybody at all in London. And to be honest, you know, I don't really know my even my neighbours that well, oh, just yeah. because, you know, people come and go, people move yeah. in and then, you know, six months later, there's somebody else moving in and... It's very transient, I would say, London. But I lo- at the same time, I love it because it's so diverse and it's so, you know, it's such a mix and you hear lots of different languages all the time, which I really, I really like. I like living in that kind of uh, atmosphere. Fantastic. And, uh, and it's always been, you know, for me, an important place to be because it's where I had to be, you know, for auditions and, and you know, going for jobs and, and stuff. And the work was down, although I've done jobs that have toured, you know, around the country and whatever, and musicals and things, but... but <laughs> Uh, all of the auditions I had to go to were always in London. So it ha- really, it had to be my my base, particularly when I was starting out, because that's where the work was. So you go to where the work is, you know, it's the yeah, way it is. Yeah, so where, whereabouts were you from in Kent originally? What's it so called? I'm, I'm from a town called Gillingham in Kent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. 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 In the in the lowest league of the, uh, I was going to say they've got a football club. But <laughs> the <not> football. <laughs> I went to my first game with my dad when I was about ten, so I've been a lifelong fan of Jill, Jill, the oh, Jills, up, so up the Jills. You've got at least one then. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, but it's you know it's a really tough. It's a really tough, tough life being a Gillingham fan because it's not so, you know, there aren't many highs, a lot of lows, not so many highs. I sympathise with you, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my one high was going to see Gillingham in a playoff against Man City at, Wim, at um, Wembley in the 90s. And uh, <laughs> we were winning 2-0 and then we lost. So it was a, oh. a disastrous, disastrous yeah. day. But, but you know, it, it, it has its uh, occasions like that. But then there are many, many other times where it's a disaster. But at least you got to live the high of going to Wembley. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I you know. that was a that was a great day out for, for, for all yeah, the Jills definitely. fans. Yeah, well, do you know, we were talking about great highs and... I remember being on stage with you because you dragged uh-huh. me at 15. You were my first concert. <laughs> oh, and my God. Yeah, you, you pulled me up on stage at the Par Hall in At the Par Hall. Yeah. yeah. But, well, do you remember what the song we were we were doing you at the time? You pulled me up to, to actually The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Ah. And yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you pulled me up because it was my birthday and I was on the front row. Ah, and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember calling my mum... And I was in my first concert. I'd been allowed to go to on my uh, own with friends. Uh, and I ended up and I was crying my eyes out. My mum thought that something really bad had happened to me. And it was just because I got a kiss off you. Oh my God. Oh my God. You were 15. I was, yeah. My Blimey. All the, and then we met you again at the Par Hall yes, uh, when we were there a few years ago. I was ago. working. 
you know. I know, yeah, I remember I remember meeting you outside. Well, I and... will say the teenage me took over and <laughs> we went in the dressing room and we had a photo taken. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember. You know. you know, the Pahol's got great memories for me because that tour was so, you know, we had, uh, you you probably saw, but we had Paul Young on the stage with us, with his yep, band. I remember. And, um, uh, and we toured all over the UK. But that was one of my favourite venues. And, and, you know, it's a brilliant venue for, for, for bands to, pl to play at. Yeah. It's got a great history, that place, Definitely. Par Hall. And, and we, we did it this time with Toya and um, with Hazel. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, it was a, that was a fab night as well. Really enjoyed that. Oh, and meeting you again all these years later. <laughs> I, mean, you know, I know I was the highlight of the visit you, you know? were exactly <laughs> <laughs> no it was a, no, it was a I mean, brilliant night it was a brilliant yeah. night and so nice to hear that story from you that you remembered that that time when we were when we were there when you were just a kid yeah I mean it was you know I mean it was my teenage dream to get that uh, close to you and it happened uh, you know I need to get a little bit serious here because do you know we know that you're now, you know, we all know now that you're you're gay and, you know, yeah. and you, were you worried about what my reaction was going to be when you come out as gay? <laughs> I mean, you know, we had ideas here, mate. You know? <laughs> all the teenage girls at the time had all these ideas. And then, uh, you know, this wow, look at this guy know, on stage. Yeah, it was really, it, it was a really difficult time for me because, you know, the 80s, the early 80s, it wasn't it wasn't an easy time to be gay yeah. and to come out. Yeah. And the record company certainly didn't want to know anything about that. You know, they just they just didn't at all. And, you know, it wasn't just me. There were, you know, big stars like George Michael, who who was, you know, in the in the in the same position, probably worse than me because he was he was a famous much more famous than I was. And uh, don't uh, put yourself down here, darling. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but but you know, everybody was in that position and yeah. and uh I I felt very constrained by it, very worried about it because of obviously I I had a partner at that time as well. And it was not it was not encouraged by the even by the by the you know by the record company who were who were very difficult I have to say to work with they were very constraining and also uh, I can remember during that tour that that for that very first tour we did somebody in the uh, 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 in the after after uh, after the show coming up to me a woman coming up to me and saying to me you're gay aren't you and my I, and I immediately froze and just uh, and I said no and. And afterwards, I was so angry at myself, angry at myself yeah. for yeah. saying no and angry at her for shouting it at me. Yeah. And because it was a kind of her trying to kind of put me down a little bit, I thought, yeah. and trying yeah. to do it in a kind of nasty way, not not in a nice way, like it's OK if you because that wasn't the attitude back yeah. then. And and, yeah. uh, and things are different now but I still think it's it's not as easy as it can be in other professions you know the set in any entertainment industry in the acting yeah. industry anything when you're in the public eye is quite is yeah. difficult but but it's you know I'm I'm in that position in, in that time of my life now where it doesn't matter I'm happy to be who I am and be honest about who I am and it's it feels so much easier you know I don't yeah. have to hide my partner away in no, the, this is, excellent this is it you yeah. know i mean as a fan for so many years of you uh -huh. it didn't really matter to me i don't care yeah. i love you anyway you know you can <laughs> oh. be, and just to know that you were happy and you were allowed to come out and, uh -huh. and share that voice actually yeah, yeah. making love you even more oh that's that so makes, nice uh, you know so. that's so nice thank you so much uh, and you know, uh, and the response, uh, like like your response there, has been and been very lovely and supportive, and and that's meant a lot that's to me. That's really good to hear. Yeah, really. yeah. Steve, can, can we go back to the highlights of your uh -huh. career to uh -huh. 1982 Top of the Pops, and maybe uh -huh. jump forward from there, jump forward to what you're doing at the moment. Uh huh. So so uh, well, 
top of the pops yeah was a was a big highlight we we loved uh absolutely loved doing that show except i hated wearing that blooming loincloth on the, <laughs> on the bloody show i absolutely <laughs> did not want to wear that thing there was literally a... i loved the loincloth <laughs> <laughs> it, you know it would have been fine if you wanted something to clean the car with a nice bit of chamois leather you know that's what it was designed for but not for covering my bits so anyway, <laughs> so um, uh, my heart sank actually because I wore it on the first episode of Top of the Pops, and the producer Michael Hell said, "No, sorry, you can't wear that. Uh, that's too far too revealing." And I was like, "Yes, fantastic!" So I went, went and quickly, quickly changed. And then when we got to number one, um, then the producer came down to the floor again and said. Uh, uh, by the way, I think it's time now. You're now you're so successful. You should wear that loincloth. And I'm like, oh god. <laughs> but the record company were like, great, fantastic. Now get it, go get it on, Steve. So anyway, I wore it. But and the record company thought that was gonna that was gonna do you know uh, fabulous for the record sales or whatever. But I think we'd already been at number one for three weeks at that point, and it blooming dropped the next week <laughs> after I worn it. So. <laughs> The lion sleeps tonight from tight fit. All that effort, but no, you know, everyone remembers it. So I'm glad I'm, you know, I'm gl glad I did in, in a way kind of thing. But, but since the, after the, after the, after that, the, the group kind of, we had our issues we had lots of people around us and pulling us in different directions and the record company sacked the girls and and it kind of fizzled out a bit after that and and then I went on and had another couple of deals I, I had a deal with um uh, Rocket Records and did a song with PWL with Stockade and Waterman and, and another song with Bronze Kibi and uh, I had another small um, a deal as well. And then I just thought, oh, I've, uh, you know, I've, this has run its time now. I need to go back to what I was doing before. So I, I started um, auditioning for shows again and went back to what I'd done originally and um, had uh, my musical, uh, musical theatre career come, kind of uh, went full circle and went back to doing that again. Okay. Um, and that's what I was doing up until about, um, about 2000, the year 2000. And then, uh, like I've, I've said to you before, I had these issues with my losing my um, sight and I stopped doing theatre. And then um, in about 2010, the, the girls contacted me because they were doing a gig and um, they'd been working as tight fit, but with a different guy. And uh, and they th suddenly thought, oh, well, maybe Steve might be interested because this guy that they're working with can't do this particular gig and we'll give him a call, see if he's interested. And and, and it kind of started from there, I guess. Um, uh, and then one of our first big gigs was in um, Trafalgar Square doing London Pride in front of about, you know, 20, 25,000 people in the square <laughs> with everybody all singing along you know, to the song. Brilliant. And and Absolutely it was amazing. and that was amazing. Yeah, I look back on that, and you know, because I've I've been in the crowd very often, watching the performers on the stage, and just being there and being up on the stage and everyone singing was just a, a, I loved it, absolutely loved it. Fantastic. And, and and then kind of from there, we just started doing eighties nights and eighties shows, like the one that you came to, um, Debs. Uh, and then in 2016 we did a covers album only had one new track on it and we did that with almighty records and then uh i had sent that album actually to energize and they said that they wanted to do an now they would like to do an album with us but with new material so um fast forward a few years later i thought well, we, we wouldn't hear from them and all of a sudden i had a, an email out of the blue and and they sent us some songs and said would you be interested would you guys be interested in doing an album with us so yeah that was in 20 no, 2020 yeah 21 and then we started recording that year after the lockdowns had, had uh, sort of started to ease up a little bit and and so we've had the three singles we're on the we're on the third single now and then we start finishing off the album probably hopefully be finished by the end of the summer so um 
we're looking forward to doing you know promotions for that and and doing these these new songs which we're absolutely loving because i think we're still as enthusiastic about the music now as we were back when we might be a little bit older you know we might be wiser <laughs> a little bit wiser we don't have the pressure of i doubt that. that very much no no exactly <laughs> thank you jebs thank you for stepping in there um we we, we might we we are, are very happy to be doing this with energize because they're such such nice people to work with they're just a very small label you know they've got rosala and um nikki french um and sean smith and and and, and other people and and they you know they're they're so nice to work with and so relaxed with us but Lovely. because it's a small label it takes they work with one artist and then they do some tracks with another artist and it kind of rotates so it's taken a while to finish the album but fingers crossed by the summer we've got the next songs lined up we've just got to set up some studio time to do them we've got some lovely lovely songs on the album and in fact one of the songs we've just recorded a song called Lionhearted um <laughs> which is it has no connection at all to the lion but but it's a song about um uh equal rights and we've never had a song with a message like that before and uh, i think i'm going to be really proud of that song when it comes out that's great so yeah, 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 so yeah. just just moving to well talking about recent times then uh you've been on the top of the heritage charts as well with your recent <laughs> single all out yeah, now, yeah. Terry and I uh, spoke to Mike Reed about this actually a few yeah, months yeah. back. In fact, it was probably six months now. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, he was uh, very enthusiastic about the heritage chart, as you would expect, because it's uh -huh. his baby. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, like yeah, he mentioned you as well. So um, yeah, yeah, we saw, we saw memories of him. him. Yeah, he's 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 amazing, Mike. You know, he's yeah. he's uh, looks exactly the same now as he did back <laughs> in the top yeah. of the pops days. Yeah. He's he yeah. hasn't changed at all. He's very very enthusiastic about the music, and he set this whole thing up himself. And <clears throat> Heritage chart is amazing. All these artists are putting music out that doesn't get played on. Uh, you know, on on the BBC uh, as as much as it it could be, you know, and and a, a lot of these artists have had major careers, much bigger than ours even, and and so you know, it's nice to have an outlet for that music that you possibly wouldn't wouldn't get with without his help. So we've been very very fortunate, you know, getting uh, we had a number one with Fallout, then we had another number one with um, Holding On to You. And electric, the current single is number five this week. So, yeah, yeah we're doing with, and it's voted for by the people that listen to the stations. So, it's amazing. We're we're, we're absolutely loving that. We just we saw him last week because we recorded for his TV show and did, made a video with him, and uh, j just absolutely very grateful to get this opportunity with him because he's giving us, you know, uh, an outlet for our music. Excellent, excellent. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah Steve, yeah. you mentioned a couple of um other other names in the music business, Paul <laughs> Young, Toya. Have you got uh, to meet some of your particular heroes, some of the people that you admire and music that you enjoy? I really I've been lucky. Yeah, I have I because you know I had my um uh deal with Rocket, so uh, yeah. I got to meet Elton on a few occasions. Wow. I took, yeah. wow. And uh, I remember going to his um 40th birthday party yeah. a long time ago when I was <laughs> when I was signed to his label yeah. and there were so many oh my god it was at John Reed's house in Rickmansworth yeah and everybody was there I mean George George Michael was there yeah. um or, or lots of big uh, uh famous American names um and, and I, I got to meet a few people that night so that was amazing but also being on top of the pops and yeah. and being in that area where you're all on different stages so you can watch the different acts with Mark Armand yeah. you know with ABC with um uh spandau ballet who wow, have, yeah, yeah. you know not actually you know not necessarily meeting each one yeah. of them but watching them and being up close to them and seeing seeing how they see how they worked and um, that was quite fascinating to me i learned a lot from that um uh and i remember meeting alison moye at the tube yeah. one time oh, yeah. who a, i'm a big big fan of so and she was brilliant swore like a trooper i loved her <laughs> i absolutely loved her <laughs> so yeah i i, I 
uh, and Paul, you know, touring with Paul was really nice. And we did we did a gig with him not long ago. He's uh, still working and still still doing really really well. Um, yeah, he's he's a, a lovely guy. Yeah, really lovely guy. Yeah. Just just going back a few years, well, quite a few years actually. Uh, a lot you many years. As a model originally, weren't you? So how <laughs> did you get together with Julie and Denise? So that's what it always says on um, headlines when it yeah. talks about the group, former male model. Yeah. So it's something that I did probably for about a year and a half just to get a few extra pennies in, you know, and I was not Britain's Next Top Model. I, <laughs> Debs would I, disagree. I, I, did, I definitely disagree. I did, I did, you know, the Freeman's catalogue, um, all the... Yeah, Which copy nothing. so I can get it, please? <laughs> <laughs> I never did the underwear pages, Deb. So oh, no. no. it was in those ones. So um, I, I just did, you know, a little bit of that. But I, I went to stage school when I was probably 10 or 11. I'm at the local school. I started off doing um, uh, ballroom classes there and, and uh, the, the owner of the school then started Brought, told, called my parents in and said, he, you know, he's a good dancer. We, he needs to come in and do tap dancing and whatever, other other classes. So um, I used to go to this stage call probably five or six days a week after school. My parents, you know, I come from a very working class background. My dad's a carpenter and mom's a housewife. Couldn't afford to pay. So the school, the lady who ran the school was, was quite wealthy and was very lovely and kind to me. And my parents only paid for one class a week and I went every day. So, um, and then I went into uh, classical dance and I was uh, a dancer with English National Ballet when I was 18 until I was 20. And then I gave it up because I realized I was never going to be uh, a soloist. I thought I could do better if I moved on to other areas. So I, I started doing um, auditions for musicals. My dad had been a singer and um, in, in local uh, uh, amateur dramatics and and I and I really wanted to sing and dance and act and do a bit of everything so my first musical was Best of the Whole House in Texas at Drury Lane in um, 1981 uh, and uh, I loved it I was, it only ran for six months it was a big hit on Broadway but it wasn't such a big hit here and then they made a film with Dolly Parton about uh, uh, the show and so um, that was my kind of uh, first big singing job and and then from there, I kind of started pushing more to the singing, to the singing side of things. And um, uh, I, I did a, that's when I did a little bit of modeling on the side just to get some work in. And um, I, I'd just been offered another musical. Uh, I was offered a, a, a small chorus part in Evita, but I couldn't do it because I had a, uh, I had a, actually a catalog job booked in. And couldn't do it. And then a few weeks later, I had an audition for Type Fit, and I I got the job. And in fact, there was a, there was about hundred people from the agency. So we Denise, Julie, and I were all with the same agency for theatre work. And um, the record company came to the label, and we all went to the audition. We were all the, of the same audition. Um, and they whittled it down. There was about 100 people there. They whittled it down to about four or five. And the last two guys were myself and Denise's brother. And uh, and then they they decided at the end of the day that it was the three of us, myself, Julie and Denise. And so we'd never met, you know, each other before that point. We hadn't worked together, although we'd been in the bit, you know, in the same business. Um, and yeah, and so it was a very quick kind of getting to know each other from that point on. And, you know, we've, uh, we're have we more or less like family now. We have our moments, but we've known each other for so long um, that we are, we're very close. You know, we we socialize um, with each other, not all the time, obviously, but we we meet up even when we're not working, we meet up and have a meal and, and, uh, and, check out which whatever we've all we've all been up to um and um yeah it's like we're a bit like family now because we've been <laughs> each other for 40 years yeah it's a, long, it's a long time denise was just 19 when we started out you know it was a long they are so long. beautiful and they look amazing yeah they look absolutely oh. amazing so yeah it's it's 
it's nice. I, I when we're on stage, I, I kind of look, I, I just look sideways sometimes and think, oh my god, if somebody <laughs> told me forty years ago I'd still be doing this, I'd be shooting them. <laughs> so Steve, on on a much more serious note. Um, uh, I know you've mentioned this, and you mentioned it on your Twitter profile, the uh, failing eyesight. Is this something yeah. hereditary? Is this some? No, can, no. Can it be treated? Because, <clears throat> well, I'm very lucky because I go to Moorfields, uh, I, 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 a hospital in London, and they're absolutely brilliant there. Um, I had something called CMV retinitis, which is it, it, it really, really um, happened because my immune system wasn't working um, very well, yeah. and uh, and and then that's that's when the CMB started, and so it it caused detached retinas in, ah. in both my eyes, yeah. and uh, multiple detachments, and each time they repaired the detachment, they had to cut part of the retina away because it was so damaged. And and then in order to keep the retinas in place and stop um, stop them de detaching again, I had to put uh, silicone oil in both of my eyes to take the liquid out and put the oil in, yeah. and that kind of holds the retinas in place. But it's still kind of gradually it's been um, deteriorating a little bit. I, I've recently lost the sight in this eye, in my my right eye. Yeah. But I can I, I I can still see when the light goes on and off, but that's all in that eye now. And this eye, I've got a little bit of sight left in the centre. Yeah. So um, uh, I, you know, I'm I'm registered severely sight impaired, which means I get a half price BBC <laughs> license. <Yeah. laughs> There's the bit on the plus side. <laughs> that's to be positive, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah so it's been it's been ongoing kind of thing as i've had lots of operations and many many eye operations and um it, it but it really is something that makes you appreciate how important something that you take for granted is when you begin to lose it you really really appreciate um how how important that that the gift of sight is, you know, yeah. so yeah. it's such an yeah. important part of your life. And and I, I I'm pretty independent. You know, I I do use a cane if I'm on my own, but uh, if I'm with Andy and if, if we're out on the street, I'm fine. I just hang on and I'm and the, but if I've got my cane, the public are brilliant. People come up all the time and say, you know, can can we help you? Are you lost? No. And quite often I am. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I'm very I'm very and and living in London, you know, it's easy to get around, so yeah. it's fine. But I you know obviously I don't drive anymore, but yeah. it's been a big adjustment to it. But you know, I'm pretty like I said, I'm pretty independent. I've got a little bit of sight in this eye, so um yeah, I'm very I see myself as very fortunate. That okay. uh, that this that I have some some yeah. vision, yeah, yeah. If if I if I'm uh, got this right, Denise was married to Pete Waterman, wasn't she? Yeah, now, yeah. Did did that help your career anyway with being knowing Pete or or no. did you not go <laughs> no. down that road? <laughs> no. In fact, I think it, Denise did a single with with Pete, but it was kind of before um, Stock Aiken and Waterman because they oh, right. were okay. they were together yeah. just before. For that, so she did a record with 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 Pete on her own, and um, in fact, I think Denise was with Pete when I did um the splash single uh, with uh, with Stock Aitken and Waterman. So um, but you know they have a they've got children together now, so they have that yeah, relationship yeah. that they you know they co-parent or Denise has the the girls living with her. But um, or one of the girls living with her still, but they are they are very different people, let's say. <laughs> so Julie isn't really uh, Denise really really isn't into train spotting that much, and <laughs> um, and Denise and you know they they had that relationship and they've got two very nice daughters, so you know they they keep everything uh, on the good side for that. That's Excellent. lovely. Uh, Steve, with your experience in the music industry, uh, are you working in the music in the studios helping other musicians? So, um, you know, it's changed so much now uh, to how it was back in the day in terms of studio time. Because back back then, you would go in with your producer, it'd all be on tape, you know, you'd... Uh, 
they do everything with, with uh, bouncing stuff over onto various tracks, you know, and, and you had like 48 tracks, and but they bounced stuff over and the producers were really, really in charge. It's very, very different now because we just go into a studio with an engineer. Um, we know we've been using one in North London, sometimes in Essex, and uh, uh, we've got some very nice studios that we go to, but they're quite small. And uh, you don't need a lot these days. You need an, an engineer. Everything is digital. So we can record the vocals. He'll save the vocals and then send them off to the producer, uh, Matt Pop, who, who was work, working with us. And he's in France. So I've had a, a few people um, contact me to say they'd like to you know, get some work in studios. But most of the studios that we work in are very, very small. They're not like Abbey Road kind of studios, you know, they're just a, a, a very, very basic setup where we go and record vocals, basically. Yeah. Um, and there aren't that many studios around these days that employ people to 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 do, uh, you know, engineering or whatever, because it's, it's usually a one man job. You can do it all on your own. Okay. So it's much harder to get into that kind of into that kind of uh, scenario. Um, uh, and what I normally say to people is just look online because you can find lots of you can find lots of studios listed and contact people and see if they need any help or see if they need um, uh, to uh, if they're looking for artists, yeah. uh, send in your tapes, you know, send in your music, send in a, a sample of you, even if it's on your phone, you know, just singing yeah. into your phone, recording that, putting it on email and sending it off to people because, you know, that that's how it works these days you you know back in the day that would never that would never have been a possibility there wasn't yeah. even the opportunity to do something like that so that that would be my my um advice to people is to really really get on get on get on your own case and and yeah. get out there and and send all your stuff off to people and, and who knows who knows what might come of that that's great advice i must ask you steve has anyone actually said to you about the lion sleeps tonight. It's a marmite track. You either love it or hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time. I love it. I love it. All I the just... time. <laughs> and and that that I absolutely understand that because I think you know it's one of those songs you either love it or love it. But but it's been used in so many things, you know, in the Lion King, and people sample it. And it and it's a song, like you say, though, that comes on. It either gets you up on the dance floor or off to the toilets. <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Did you find back uh, in the day that all the fans you had back in the the eighties, all the euphoria with the girls screaming and all that, do you still get that today? You know, you did the the gig in Trafalgar Square. Was it is it oh. is the same now or is it? A different it's type it's of very different. It's very different now. I can remember going to a, I don't know we were doing a Capital Radio something for Capital Radio in London oh. and 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 uh, uh, having to get like escorted to the car and people banging <laughs> on the car. You know, yeah. yeah. These days, <laughs> people, people are not banging off the, on the car anymore. <laughs> but but you know it. It's still nice to really nice. Like when we met you, Debs, at Pahol, people still come up and say, Can you know, they've all got the camera phones with them? Can we get a picture? And I love doing it. I love meeting people who have uh, followed our career and have come back to see us all these years later and, and, and meeting people and taking pictures with them. And, and people become, you know, people come see us at gigs and they end up becoming friends on Facebook and we chat, you know. And, uh, I know and, we do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So uh, I, I, I love the way that it's kind of evolved into a kind of from fans to just lots of different friends all over the place. We're all friends. Yeah, yeah I, I talked to uh, one of the uh, presenters from Radio City uh, a few years ago, uh, and he was around in the eighties, nineties, and he was a oh. young lad then as a oh. as a DJ, you know, as a, a a presenter. And he said he couldn't even get out the studio at the end of his program. And yeah, all he yeah. used to do he was pay big bucks, turn up, do a show for two or three hours, walk out, girls screaming everywhere. But <laughs> these days, 
he's got to spend all day in the studio to earn the same amount of money. <laughs> and he comes out and there's no one outside. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's true, you know. But but at the same time, it, it's really nice to have those memories of those times where it was like that, where it was a bit crazy. I will, certainly wouldn't want to go back to that again, and that's never going to happen for us now. When I'm, and I'm quite happy about that. And 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 I used to get quite nervous. In fact, I had really bad. I, I don't know if you no, noticed back in the day, Debs, but I had terrible stage fright. I was <laughs> was never that comfortable being out there, you know, in front with all the eyes on me. I, yeah. I kind of felt very. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, some people love all that, uh, you know, the the attention and the and the stardom side of things. But I'm quite a private person, and I quite like. Yeah not being um not being uh the center of attention I, they quite like to blend in so yeah, yeah i'm quite happy right now that. sorry i always remember you being so kind when you pulled me up on stage and i was in tears and you put your arm on my back and we were at the very back of the stage and uh -huh. you said just smile it's okay <laughs> and you were so kind to me you know so um oh, you know, that's really good awesome, you know um but uh, I do I, remember my manager pulling me in, going because I was doing front of house in the theatre, uh, and uh, she yeah. dragged, she pulled me in, she went, "Come on!" and we both ran in screaming to dance to you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! <laughs> I, I, I'm glad it's a happy experience, and that's the nice thing about music now. When you when you hear a song from from back in the day, you know, from from the eighties or where, whenever. If that's a nice memory, it takes you right back to that time in exactly. your life. And music's yeah. the only thing that can do that. You know, it takes Definitely. you right back to that to that memory, and you're in that moment again. And that and that's what I love about music. I love that. Yeah. That's a wonderful yeah. image. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Steve, I think that time's caught up with us. Listen, we've really enjoyed this. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I could yeah. chat with you all night if you had time. But time's <laughs> caught up with us. So we say thanks very much and let's keep in touch, Steve. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been it's been a joy. It's been really nice. Thank, thank, you. thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. It's yeah. been fun. It's it been has. fun. It really has. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> Love you forever. Great, great, great to see you, good Debs. Thank you so much for 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 being in part of this. <laughs> thank Brilliant. you. Thanks, All Steve. Right. Cheers, All mate. Right, guys. Thank you. Bye Take now. Care. Bye. Bye now. Bye.